More than 10 years ago, I began using Android devices. It actually started with an HTC Windows phone that I was able to hack Android onto it. And then I upgraded to an HTC Hero, an HTC Evo, and then eventually I went to the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, which really changed the world having a stock Android device with great hardware. Taking a look at this device, you can just see how old school and cool it is all in one. Seeing all these app icons and everything really takes me back. And thanks to Google, today begins a new journey in the Android era with the Pixel 6 Pro. Huge shout out to Google for providing this phone to, for me today. I'm going to be using this as my main mobile device, and I'm excited to see where Google has gone from using stock Android on the Galaxy Nexus to having the latest Android 12 version with the Tensor chip that is built inside the Pixel Pro. So in this series of videos, I'm gonna show you all the great things that you can do with your Pixel phone. Today's video is all about getting it set up so that it works for you. So let's start by seeing what's in the box. Now this is the Stormy Black version. There's also a Pixel 6, which isn't quite as big and doesn't have as many features, but uh, both phones should work really well. So there you go, you have this nice camera bump on the back there with the two-tone color. And then here inside the box, you do receive a USB-C charging cable. And then you have this little adapter that allows you to move all the files and everything from your old phone to your new phone. We'll be using that in a minute. And then you also have a setup guide here on getting your Pixel set up. So there you can see you have the SIM card tray, the power button, volume button below the power button, it does have a in-screen fingerprint scanner and then the USB-C port at the bottom. And if you need any help, you can go to the websites right there. And to turn this on, you will need to hold down the power button for five seconds and follow the steps on screen. Now, one thing you'll notice is there is no power adapter here inside the box. So here is the new Anchor 511. Now inside here, we have the product and then it comes with some info on using this. Now this does support up to 20 watts of charging, which is really great for such a small device. So here we have the black. It also comes in blue, purple, and white. So four cool different colors there. Now this does use USB-C to power your new device. So for the Pixel, we'll be able to just plug this in and it will be able to power and charge up our Pixel 6 Pro. Make sure you check out the Anchor 511. Link will be in the description below. Now the next step is to turn it on. So here we're gonna hold down the power button for five seconds. And there the device turns on. There you can see it does have a front facing camera at the top in the screen, which allows you to have this really big, bright and vibrant screen without a big notch at the top. Welcome to the Pixel right here on the screen. We can change our language and you can also turn on different assistant options if you need help setting this up. We're just going to select get started. And now the first thing we actually need to do is install a SIM from your phone. So you might be able to just pop out the SIM from your old device and put it in here. Um, for me, I will need to use a new SIM. So we're going to install that now. And inside the box, you do receive a SIM ejector that allows you to do that. So over here on the side, we're just going to press the pin in, pull this out, and then we can place our SIM in here. And here we can sit the SIM in just like that and then put it back in. And then it's going to ask to connect to Wi-Fi to help this get set up. And today I will be moving all my info over from the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra to the Pixel 6 Pro. So next it's asking me if I wanna copy over my info to transfer my apps, photos, contacts, Google account, and more. Now, if you do want to skip this, you can select don't copy. It will load up the phone, ask you to sign into your Google account, and then you'll need to go download all your info. But for this video, we are going to copy everything over. So I'm going to select next. So now we're going to use my old phone. You need an old Android or iPhone device. Turn it on and keep it unlocked. So here we're gonna turn it on and unlock the device. And then we're going to find our old phone's cable. This one actually works because it has USB-C. And then I'm going to plug it into the old phone. Next, and then we're going to connect the cable to the Pixel 6 Pro. And now it's asking on my old phone if I want to copy over the data. Yes, I do, and I need to verify my fingerprint. And this is copying over my accounts, so I do need to put in my password on my new device. 
Now this little thing will only be used if your phone does not have USB-C. So if you have a micro USB device or if you have an iPhone with lightning, you will use this cable to plug this into the Pixel 6 Pro and then you'll use the lightning cable in here into your iPhone to copy over your data. Now, the great thing about this method is it's going to copy over your data that you don't have backed up on the cloud. So if you don't use any services, you can use this and it will just back up and copy those files directly to the new phone. And it's just going to make a copy. It is not going to remove them from the old phone at all. And now it's looking through what I do have on my existing phone. So the next screen, I'm able to choose what I do want to have copied over. And here it's showing that I have 115 gigabytes of data on my old device and the new Pixel only has 88 gigabytes of data, so there's not enough storage. So I need to come down here and choose what I may not want to have copied so that it can do the transfer. So I will not be able to copy exactly what I had, but that shouldn't be a problem. So now it's showing me what things I can copy or not copy. So here you can see I have a bunch of apps, contacts. I have 96 gig of photos and videos. Now I actually do have all of those backed up with Google Photos and Dropbox, so I most likely don't need to copy all of those over. Um, then here I have 1.2 gig of music. I have my text messages, my MMS, so picture messages, device settings like Wi-Fi, passwords, and more, and my call history. And then things that are going to sync automatically without taking up the data is my Google Calendar, my Google Contacts, and my Google Photos. So all my photos will be available in the Google Photos app and my Gmail account. So you can go through, like let's go to apps, and so I can say, choose all apps, or I can go through and uncheck the apps that I don't want to use on my new device. So maybe you have found that there are some applications you don't wanna use, you can go through and uncheck those apps so that they do not copy over, and that will help save some space and time from it not having to re-download every single app that you had on your old device. All right, and going through that list, I have unchecked a lot, and then down at the bottom it says, here are some apps that are automatically going to be installing. So these are just what you get for having an Android device. So we're gonna select okay. That only helped a little bit on my storage. So contacts, if I uncheck that, that's really not going to do much. And so here, if I uncheck photos and videos, there you can see that now I'm only going to be using 15 gigabytes on my new device of the 88. And so I'm just gonna go ahead with that. Now, some of these other ones, it looks like you only have the option to check or uncheck. Um, the apps is the one that lets you break it down to uh, specific apps that you want to have copied over because it's just going to the Play Store and downloading them again. So I'm now going to select copy and now it's going to be copying all that info over to my new phone. So next it's asking if I agree to using Google services so that it can track my location when I use location and allow for scanning to find networks or other Bluetooth devices to send files. So yes, I do want all this stuff. Do I wanna send usage and diagnostic data? Yes. And here it says it's gonna install apps from the Play Store. So I do want to agree to all of those. And now it's saying, do you want to back up your phone with Google One? So I am a Google One subscriber. So it's giving me this option to back up my photos and videos, stored in Google Photos, back up my app and data, contact, SMS, MMS, call history. Um, so yeah, I do want to actually have all that backed up. I've never used that before. So let's go ahead and turn this on. So if you don't have Google One, you can just skip that. And now we're going to set a pin code so that we can access our phone and then set a fingerprint after that. So now we're going to set up the fingerprint unlock and here you can read more about what it actually does. And here it does say that your fingerprint and images are stored securely on your phone and never leave your phone. So you don't have to worry about your fingerprint being used in the cloud and being stolen or anything. It's only stored on the device. So your phone can be unlocked when you don't intend it to if you do use the fingerprint scanner, but we're gonna go ahead and agree and we're gonna set this up. So if I hit start, now I need to hold the phone and press where I want it to unlock. So you just kinda gotta pick up and move it around. and my fingerprint has been added. So now it's asking if we wanna keep going. Next, we're gonna set up things like Google Assistant, Google Pay, and everything else. And yes, I'm going to continue doing this. 
or you can select the option to finish later. So here it's asking if we want to talk to our phone hands-free with Google Assistant. Yes, I do agree to doing that. And it's going to use a feature called Voice Match. So anybody can use Google Assistant on your phone, but Voice Match does add some security to recognize your voice versus just anyone else that is trying to talk to your phone. So I've already set up my voice match. I'm going to be using that with Google Assistant. And now it's saying access your assistant without unlocking your phone. So this is nice so that you can quickly ask a question without having to use your fingerprint. And so I'm going to allow for that to happen. So then I can call and other things right from the lock screen. And now it's saying, do we want to set up Google Pay? Now, we can do that later in the app, but I already have mine set up, so it is going to link my card. And now we do need to confirm some of the card details and my information. And for security, I will need to unlock my phone for larger purchases with my fingerprint. And here it's saying Google Pay will be set as a device administrator to make those changes. So now it's set up pretty much the majority of the device. Now, the last thing it's asking is if I want to set up anything additional. So we could add another Google account, we could get instant translations, identify music around you, so you can learn about how to do all these different things. But right now I'm going to select no thanks. And now it's asking if I want to get more tips and tricks, I'm going to select yes, I'm in. And here it is still copying over data, so keep the devices connected. It's gonna last about four more minutes. Now our phone is almost ready. So it says we can now disconnect the cable. So we're gonna go ahead and do that on both devices. And now it's going to install the 272 apps I have in the background just using the Wi-Fi, but it has transferred my contacts, music, text messages, device settings, and my call history. And now it's making some final changes to get my phone ready. Now we're going to learn about navigating the phone as some other Android phones are slightly different. So is what we're going to do is learn about swiping home. So all you have to do is swipe up from the bottom of the screen to go home. Next, we're going to learn back. So to go back, all you need to do is swipe from the edge of the screen in, or you can swipe from this side in. Now we're going to switch apps, which you hold up and then it goes to the recent apps menu, and then you can find the app you want to use by swiping uh, left or right. So now we're just going to swipe up to go home. And as you can see, it did copy over the background that I previously had on my phone. And here it's giving us many different notifications because it's downloading and continuing that setup process. And then here we have our new home screen. So right now there's only one page here. And if we swipe over, it's going to go to Google Discover where it's going to talk about news articles and different things that are tailored to you um, for things you've searched through on Google and other such info. So on the home screen, we can swipe up to get to our apps and we can keep swiping to check out our apps. You can see it still has quite a few of those to download. Swipe down, that will go away. Now on the home screen, if we swipe down from the top, then it opens our notification shade. And if we swipe down again, here it's opening our quick settings. So this is where we can quickly turn on and off Wi-Fi. Here I have a flashlight option I can turn on and off. And then I can swipe over. Now there are some new settings that I do want to add into here. So I can click the edit right here and it pulls open all that are available. So up here are the ones that I can see, down here are the ones that I can't see. And so I do want to drag some of these up so that they do show up on the home screen. So you have a lot of settings in here and as you download some apps, more will pop up. So right now we're just going to stick with those. Let's go ahead and try extra dim up here. And that's pretty much it. So now we're going to swipe to go back. And now we have all those settings here at the top. Now to lock and unlock the phone, we can just simply press the power button. It locks, push it again, it unlocks and then I'm going to use my fingerprint. You need to hold it there for a second to unlock the device. And then we have our volume here. Now for the volume, you can simply mute like this. You can tap again and you can turn on vibrate or we can go back to sound. And here we can change the volume uh, with touch as well. And if we touch the three dot menu here, we can then adjust our media volume, call volume, ring and notification and then our alarm volume. 
And then the last option we have here is called Live Transcribe. So when you turn this on, if you're using an app while your phone is on silent, you'll see a closed caption window pop up on screen so that you can actually hear what they're saying even though your volume is turned off, which is pretty cool. And that works with your volume off or your volume on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off right there. So now I'm going to give it some time for all of my different apps to download and I'll come back and show you the different ways in which I get signed into all my apps and organize my home screen. Now the transfer of my apps to the Pixel 6 Pro has finished, but you'll notice one thing that uh, my home screen is kind of boring over here and I have it all set up over there. So that is something that I will need to go through and reorganize over here on my Pixel 6 Pro. But if we swipe up, I will have all of the same applications now that I previously had over on my Samsung phone. Now it is giving me a pop-up to use app suggestions. So this will automatically display recommended apps right on my home screen. So if you do want that, you can enable it. If not, no thanks. I'm gonna go ahead and say get app suggestions because this will automatically um, find my most used apps at a certain time of day and display them right now. It looks like right now I'm typically ordering crumble cookies. And on the app suggestions, if you hold down up here at the top, you do have the option to say, don't suggest this app, or you can just select cancel and it will put the apps back there at the bottom. So now let's go into organizing our home screen. So the first thing to know is anywhere on the screen, you just hold down your finger until this pop-up pops up and you can adjust the home settings, widgets, wallpaper, and style. So let's go ahead and adjust home settings. So this is a lot of info that uh, you can go through and it's gonna give us a lot of different settings that we can adjust. Here we can have it add app icons to the home screen. So when you download a new app, it's automatically going to put the icon. Here we can swipe to access Google over on this side. We can see suggestions and we can also allow our phone to be rotated in portrait mode if we want to. But right now we don't need to adjust any of those. So here's how you can get to your home, Google home feed just by swiping that way. Next, let's go ahead and look at widgets. So here are all the widgets that you can add and these are based on the apps that you do have downloaded. So some apps support certain widgets like here if I have my Google Fit app and I wanna add this little activity widget, I can place it there and it's automatically going to move over the apps that I um, already have on the screen. And then it's gonna give a widget where it updates automatically throughout the day when activity happens. So there's lots of widgets, you can play around with those. And at any time if you wanna remove it, you hold it down and can pull it up to remove. Or if I wanna move it to a whole new screen, I am able to do that. Now some of these also have the option to change the size. So there you can see it made it a little smaller. If we wanna make it really big, oh look, you even got more info when you make it really big. So let's keep it at the small size there. So next we have wallpaper and style. Now with Android 12, it's automatically going to adjust how things look based on the color of your wallpaper. So if you wanna change that, I can change this to basic colors and I can come in here and choose the colors and you can see the accent colors changing there. But we're gonna go ahead and choose the wallpaper colors just to make it easy. And then if we want to, we can tap change wallpaper and there are all these different wallpapers that are already available um, on the phone. And if we have our own wallpaper, go into the Photos app, find the photo you wanna use, swipe up, and then you're gonna come over to the Use As. And with Use As, we have the option to set it as the wallpaper right here. And there you can see it's gonna be the wallpaper, or you can set it as the lock screen. And then when you're done, you can select the check mark there. So that is how you can adjust the wallpaper. So let's go ahead and create a folder over here. We're gonna call it Smart Home. So is what we need to do is first let's find some apps. So I'm going to find the Home app and I'm gonna hold that down and then drag it up and I can place it on the screen. Next, I'm going to find the Nest app. So you can either search or you can just scroll through. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag some of these other ones. Swipe up Nest. Drag it up. Okay, so now we have a few apps here. So if I hold down the home and put it on top of Nest, it's automatically going to create a folder that I can then organize. And then if I tap on here, I can call it a certain name. So this is gonna be called Google Home. 
Then if I have other apps, I can also drag those right into the app and I can create a different folder and I can move that folder around. And so there you go. That's how you can use folders here on your Google Pixel. And if you wanna create a new page, all you have to do is hold this down and drag over to the new page. Now there is no way to organize the pages. You just have to make sure that you've organized them the right way the first time you do it because you can't move this page on the other side of this and this page over there and so on. So that is how you organize the different pages. And at this point, our phone is pretty much almost set up. Now a few other things to do is to head into the messages app. And then here we're going to agree to faster, richer, higher quality chat on Wi-Fi or data. So as what this does is Google has implemented a new standard called RCS into Android devices. So if you're texting somebody else that has Android that has enabled this, you're going to be able to send photos and videos that are much higher quality. And they're also going to be able to see read receipts if, if you'll be able to see if they saw it or if you read it and so on. And this is a really great thing for Android. So I'd recommend getting this enabled so that you can have that better service while you are texting on your Android device. So we're going to tap agree. If that pop-up, you don't see it, you can check in the settings under chat features and you can make sure that's on and you may need to verify your phone number. Next, let's check out our contacts, make sure everything has been transferred. So if we go into the contacts, here it's recommending that we turn on backup and sync for a Google account so that if you do add new contacts, it will automatically back them up. Now I've been using backup and sync for my contacts forever and I've never had an issue. It's so nice that everything is backed up. So now you can see all of the different things that I already have backed up into my account. So here it's also saying that I have some duplicates that it can automatically help me organize and stuff, but we're going to do that later. So in the menu here, I have the option to fix that. And then I have different categories as well. And then you can create different labels there and so on. So those are all of the contacts on my account. I also have the option to choose contacts from different accounts or just the contacts that are stored on the device, which I don't know if I need any of these on the device, but uh, we'll just leave those there. So now let's go ahead and go back to my Google account. And there we have all the contacts. Now, if I wanna add a new contact, just select plus, and I can go through and add all that info there. And at the top, it will show the Google account it's going to sync that to, so you know it is going to be saved. Now one more feature to show is using the camera. So you can of course go into the camera app and immediately start taking pictures. But at any time, even if the screen is locked, you can actually double press the power button like that and it will jump right into the camera, which is pretty cool. Now here you can simply press the button to take a picture. Down here at the bottom you have your different options. So you can do the video mode and then you have these other modes here. You have the portrait mode, which keeps the person in focus and the background kind of blurs, gives it a really professional look. And you have these other options like motion and night sight, which is great for uh, astrophotography as well as taking pictures of things at night. But um, we're just gonna focus on the camera here. Up here at the top, you do have the settings where you can adjust uh, your flash, your um, other features there, timer and so on. But one other quick tip is if you want to rotate cameras, you can either push this button right here and rotate, or you can also just flip your wrist twice like that and it will change cameras. So it's a flip flip, camera changes back, flip flip, camera changes back, and that's the camera. Now one thing is all of these apps while they're on the phone, they don't have the login information to be able to use those apps. So let's go ahead and go to one app that I may want to log into, like Dropbox. So if I tap on Dropbox here, this is actually where I back up all of my photos. I have the option to sign in with my account. So this is nice. I'm already signed in with my Google account. I can just select allow, and it's then going to sign in with my account. I don't have to remember any information. Now is what I'm going to do is make sure that it's automatically going to back up new photos by going into my settings and turning on camera upload. I'm gonna select all my photos and then I'm also going to include videos and 
tap to start backing up. Okay, it's now going to begin backing up. Let's go ahead and go to a different app that I may want to sign into. Let's try another app. Let's go to Amazon. So here you can see, I do need to enter in my email and password. Now there is an option where it can automatically autofill. And right there, after waiting a second, autofill usernames and passwords popped up. So if I tap on there, it's giving me the option to have Google store and automatically retrieve my password safe on my Google account so that I don't have to re-sign into every single application. So I definitely recommend making sure that you have that set up so that if you do need to sign in now, the next time you set up a new phone, you won't have to re-sign in. So I would just go and set my email and select continue. And I do have a passphrase to kind of add some extra security to my passwords. And then it's giving me the option of which account I want to log in with. So I'm going to select that account and select sign in. And then it is going to sign into the app. So now I'm gonna go through all of my different apps and sign in and set them up just like they were over here on the old phone. And again, if you already have your password saved, it's gonna save you a lot of time. If it did not prompt you to use Google to restore your passwords, to set that up, you're going to go to the settings. Now you can scroll up and type in settings here. That takes a little bit of time to go into the settings. I like to pull down the notification shade and go to settings right here. But you're gonna scroll down and look for passwords and accounts. So here it's showing autofill service. So that's what it is using to restore those passwords. Now I can select the settings here and turn that on or off or um, look at the information that is stored. But if I tap on Google, it gives me the option to add other services. So if you didn't add your Google here, you would be able to select that. If you wanna use another service like LastPass or Dashlane or whatever password management you use, you are able to do that right there. But I already have mine set up. And if you don't want to use that at all, if you're tired of it popping up saying, save this password, you would wanna come in here and select none. So now that we have that set up, I'm gonna go through and sign in to all of my different apps. Now I already showed you how I'm going to back up my photos with Dropbox, but another way to back up your photos is through the Google Photos app, which is right here and it's already downloaded onto your phone. So the first time you open this up, it's going to welcome you to Google Photos and saying this is a place that your photos and videos will live and you have the option to back up the full resolution with your account. So here I'm going to confirm my Google account. Here you do have the option to use mobile data to back up, but I would recommend using Wi-Fi so it's not going to use your data plan. Okay, next it's going to talk about how you can find pretty much anything with Google Photos. It's automatically going to tag places, people, pets, and other things that are in your photos. And you can also get emails and tips to get the most out of your photos. So here you can see it's automatically showing the photos I've already taken on my phone, but then it's automatically going to pull in photos that I already have backed up on Google Photos. So I'm going to make sure that my backup settings are set properly. So I'm going to tap on my account at the top, and then I'm going to select Photos Settings. And right here at the top, we have backup and sync. And first it's showing my account. It's saying backup and sync is on. And then down here, it's showing what size of photos it is backing up. So right now it's saying that it automatically is backing up the original quality. Now, no matter which of these options you choose, it is going to count against your Google account storage. So I do pay for Google One where I have more storage available. Now I could back up my original quality because I have plenty of space, but I do have to pay for that. The other option is you can do storage saver. Now this is still going to take up space, but you'll be able to have a lot more photos backed up on the free storage that comes with your Google account. So in the end, you might have to end up paying for this if you do take a lot of photos and pictures on your phone, but um, there might be some other free services out there you can check. But I recommend using Google Photos or something like Dropbox that can store all your photos as those are services I have used a lot and can recommend using them. So right now let's go ahead and keep using the original quality at any time. If I need to free up space, I am able to reduce that quality so that I have more space in my Google account. So don't forget to add some protection. This is the Google Pixel 6 Pro case. I kind of like that, it has a nice little grip to it 
And I've heard that dome glass is coming out with a screen protector for this if they haven't already. So now I'm ready to use this out in the world. So with all that we've set up today, we are now ready to use the Pixel 6 Pro as my main phone. I did go ahead and transfer my Watch 4 to my new Pixel 6 Pro, so that's all set up. If you do want to learn more about this watch, you can check out the video at the end. But I'm gonna finish setting this up, learn about all the new features available on this phone, and come back with a full video all about the great new things that you can do with it. So if you have any further questions about this process, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.